Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie. Today's video, I thought it would be fun if we did a full face of the most expensive makeup that I own. So basically in each category, I'm just gonna pick the makeup product that cost the most. And yeah, we're gonna do a full face of the most expensive makeup I own. So in theory, this should look amazing, right? If all these products costed this much money, this should be a great makeup look, you'd have thought, right? <laughs> so as I usually do, I'm gonna start with eyes. Um, so the eyeshadow palette in my collection that's the most expensive is uh, unsurprisingly the Be Perfect Carnival XL Pro palette. Um, this is 42 pounds, uh, which is definitely one of the most expensive products I own, if not the. Um, I mean, this palette literally has everything in it. It's got brights, it's got neutrals, it's got beautiful shivers, incredibly pigmented mattes. Um, it's a really good palette. It's just quite expensive, that's all. So I did practice this look and I did a kind of like grey smoky eye, but honestly I feel like that's kind of boring. Um, so I want to see if I can do something a bit more colourful and adventurous today, but I don't know what. I have an idea where maybe I should like get a random colour generator and pick like two colours and try and base a look on those two colours. Yeah, I want to do that. Let's do that. Okay, clearly this website wants me to do the original thing that I had in mind. It's like a steel blue, well it looks black to me, that picture. Uh, dusty grey, so we're not going to do that, so let's try again. Um, okay, so we've got sky blue and signal red. So a blue and red look, that could, that could work. I think we can do something with blue and red. Obviously this palette has multiple blues and multiple reds, so... That should be entirely doable. I'm actually going to go off camera and do one eye, and then I will repeat the process on the other eye on camera. So I should be back with a red and blue eyeshadow look. So I promised a red and blue eye look, and I think I delivered. So we're going to just do that all again with the Be Perfect palette. So um, obviously I've got concealer base on, but we'll talk about concealer later in the video. Um, so I started with the shade Inferno, which is like a bright brick red. Did have a do have a little bit of damage here, um, but it's fine. It still works good. It's ridiculously pigmented, so pigmented that it's bloody stained my sponge. So yeah, it's a good job I brought some new sponges. Yeah, I don't know what happened. It just got a little bit broken somehow and managed to get like everywhere I got it all over my washing basket um which is like a fabric one and yeah it was uh, quite difficult to remove it's very pigmented as you can see um and this is just going in the general crease area and as you can see from the other eye I'm doing a sort of like kind of halo eye sort of style Looks a bit messy now, but it will all get blended. This was actually pretty simple and easy to do. Um, so next I'm sort of combining the shade Reckless, which is kind of like a dark sort of plummy, maroony kind of colour. Um, and tapping a little bit of influence as well, just slightly lighter plummy colour. And then I did also kind of tap a little bit of this Persuasion one in as well. Um, and I sort of just kind of mixed between those three. And um, Applied it in the sort of inner and outer thirds of the eyes in the sort of halo eye style and you know, just blending and all that stuff. Okay, now I'm using the matte white called Pillow Talk and I'm just blending out and the, the brow bone and sort of diffusing out that red shade a bit. Okay, so I'm going to do a cut crease in at the centre of that now. That is not the right brush. <laughs> okay, 
Okay, and in the center of that cut crease, I'm using the shade Peppermint, which is this beautiful light blue shimmer. And I'm using a mix of my finger and a brush for this. It is a very pretty shade. Then I'm using Back Chat, which is a dark blue shimmer, this one here, just on either side of that lighter blue. Okay, so I just cleaned up the edge of a wipe and did a bit more blending and yeah, that does not look symmetrical, does it? I do try, but I just do not look... I'm trying to work out where I've gone wrong with the symmetry. I can't really figure it out. I think I went a bit too high in this side. It doesn't matter, it's close enough. Um, so next, um, so I actually feel like a blue waterline probably would have looked quite cool with this look, but obviously we're keeping it to the most expensive products I own. Uh, the most expensive eyeliner I have is this one from Sigma. It's their Longwear Eyeliner Pencil. And it is 15 pounds, which is the most expensive coal eyeliner that I have. So we're gonna pop this in my top and bottom waterline. It is a twisty up one. Okay, and for mascara, the most expensive one that I have in my collection at the moment is the Morphe one. This one is twelve pounds. There are a few like L'Oreal ones that were very uh, close behind, but this was actually the most expensive one that I um, own at the moment anyway. I tend not to really spend much more than like, well, I guess 12 pounds, for example. I mean, 12 pounds is kind of like the max I'd want to spend on a mascara anyway, because there are so many really good, like affordable ones that are like 12 pound and under. Um, but I don't need to spend any more than that. Um, so this Morphe one, I probably wouldn't buy this one again because it is very clumpy and it can be a little bit difficult and it takes quite a bit of time to get like a good lash look with it. it just requires a lot of brushing through of the product but it's not bad it does give you pretty like thick lashes by the end it's just uh, it just takes a while to get the product to brush through nicely and not look like a complete clump of lashes um, so yeah, for that reason I probably wouldn't buy it again, but I mean I have it and I'm just gonna use it up while I do have it, but it's not bad, it's not amazing. Um, I have cheaper ones that I like better, but as I said, I tend not to spend that much money on mascaras anyway. Even £12 isn't really that expensive, like, considering it's the most expensive one I have. the fact that I could not get these eyeshadows to look symmetrical I do actually quite like the overall eye look I think it's quite cool so yeah that's the eyes done so we're gonna move on to the base now so for primer I had a bit of a struggle with this because like I wanted to try and avoid using any products that had been like discontinued but for primer I didn't really have much of a choice because like most of my primers are like discontinued products, minus like about probably like four, um, and all of those ones were quite cheap ones. Um, so we're gonna use this one. This is from Figs and Rouge. It's the Morning Glow Drops. Um, it's still on their website, and I think you might be able to get it on like eBay and things like that. But um, I think it is discontinued. On their website, it said that it retailed for like thirty-eight pounds, which obviously is quite expensive. Um, I got this in a cohorted beauty box like about two or three years ago. Um, so I obviously did not pay that for it. So we're just gonna have to use this by default. Apparently it retails for 38 pounds, but I, 
I don't think it actually still it, like is for sale anymore. So, but we're using it anyway because literally all my primers I have that aren't discontinued. Well, technically I do have a Mac Prep and Prime, but it's like a sample size, which obviously you can get those for free. So I didn't really want to include that. And all my others are like drugstore ones, like pretty affordable ones like the elf putty primer and things like that which are obviously not exactly bougie are they whereas this one has quite a bougie feel to it yeah this primer is obviously glowy as the name would suggest but it's quite like tacky it dries down like to this sort of tacky finish which I suppose is good for like makeup ripping on it and also it just gives you a bit of glow as well uh, I wouldn't say it's too much glow though and like it kind of gets more subtle as it dries down anyway right so for foundation we actually had a tie for the most expensive both of these are £35 which is the most expensive foundation um, um, so we've got the Nars Sheer Glow Foundation and we've got the Estee Lauder double wear foundation and I'm actually just going to mix these both together. So my Estee Lauder is in 0N1 Alabaster which is a bit pale for me and then um, we've got Light One Siberia in the sheer glow which um, is a very like yellow toned shade so together I feel like they make like a kind of decent shade. It's probably going to look like a tiny bit pale but dealable. Um, I like both of these foundations, I think they're both quite nice. Um, the Estee Lauder one is um, a bit better wearing, um, but I feel like I like the way the NARS one looks on the skin a little bit more. And both of them have really good coverage, so I'm just going to get a mix of these on the back of my hand. Neither of these have pumps, which I uh, thought I'd let you know. I think, I don't know if actually the uh, Sheer Glow in more recent times has a pump, or I know you can buy a pump with them, but I don't know if it... They maybe changed it so it does come with it automatically now. I don't know. Okay, we've mixed them together. Yeah, so it's probably going to look a little bit pale, but that tends to happen a lot with me anyway. Obviously, as you can tell, my skin is not in the best condition right now. So, uh, some coverage will be nice. Both of these have good coverage anyway, so I'm not really worried about that too much. Okay, so if you can see though, the most expensive one I own is the um, Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer. This is uh, £26, which is pretty pricey for a concealer. Um, this one's in the shade Swan. It's like a little bit dark for me, so I only tend to use it like on blemishes. I don't really, it doesn't really work for like under the eyes for me. So I thought I'd pick my second most expensive concealer to use under the eyes, which is the uh, Tarte Shape Tape. This one is in the shade one. This one is in the shade 12S Fair, um, and this is £25, so it's only £1 cheaper than the Too Faced one. So yeah, I'm going to use the Shape Tape under my eyes, which, stupidly, I used this to do my cut crease, so now the wand has red on it. Whoops, so my under eye might turn out a bit red. Again, it's probably not the most brightening shade, actually. It really is just like a very good like skin match. But the Too Faced one, like, just wouldn't work under the eyes because it's, like, a bit deeper than my complexion. But I can get away with it on, like, blemishes. But, yeah, I love the Tarte Shade Tape. It's one of my favourites. This is, like, running out. So, definitely would buy another one. I mean, this is either my second or my third one, anyway. Yeah, I just love that concealer. It's always going to be one of my all-time favourites. I know it's not as popular anymore because they're kind of like more natural 
base is in right now but i have acne so i can't get away with the natural face thing like i need coverage um so we're using the Too faced one now um i also do really like this concealer i would buy this one again as well despite the fact that it is so expensive um i'd probably buy the um i think this was the second lightest shade which is quite deep considering it's the second lightest but i think there's one above this um, which I'd probably buy that shade instead. But I don't mind this shade for blemishes. So like I feel like I would probably buy this shade again as well for blemishes and then just the other shade for like under the eyes. Um, I mean they might have expanded the shade range since I first bought this because I've had this for quite a long, quite a long time now. But it is a really nice concealer. It's kind of like similar to the Tarte but it's like a little bit more hydrating. One thing I will say about it though is that it has got like a quite strong like alcoholy scent. Is that just me? Is that because my product's a bit old? <laughs> or has anyone else noticed that too? I mean, we've definitely got coverage now. Um, I mean, it's a pretty nice base. I mean, considering it's like the most expensive products I own, do I think like this is like the best base I could do with all of the products in my collection. I don't know, I feel like I probably could do like slightly better to be honest. Like I feel like I do have some more affordable foundations and concealers that I actually probably like a little bit more. But this is a really strong base, definitely. Like I've got really good coverage, it's fairly matte, uh, which is what I like. Um, I've not really got much to complain about. It's a bit heavy, I will say that. It's not a lightweight base, but I mean, that's kind of to be expected. Um, so we're gonna move on to loose powders. I'm gonna use a loose powder from the eyes and a pressed powder for the rest of my face. So obviously the most expensive loose powder I have is the Hourglass one. Um, it's the Veil Translucent Setting Powder. I got this for Christmas last year actually, so technically I didn't buy it. But I know that it is £41, which is without a doubt the most expensive powder I own. And I probably will not buy this again because that is a lot of money. And honestly, I do prefer Laura Mercier, if I'm honest. Like, this is a really nice powder, don't get me wrong. Like, it's very nice. It does a really good job. It's very smooth. It, the colour works pretty good. It's a really nice powder, but for £41... No, I mean the Laura Mercier one is still pretty damn expensive as well, it's like 30 something I think. Um, but I feel like I'd be more willing to buy that one again just because I like the formula a little bit more. So yeah, we're just going to use this one in the under eye area and I will switch to a pressed powder. Okay, so for pressed powder, the most expensive one I own is actually the Fenty Beauty one. That's the Pro Filter Soft Matte Powder Foundation. Uh, mine is in 105. I have used the majority of it, as you can see. Didn't write the price down for some reason, so let's find out how much it is. Um, wow, it's 30 bloody pounds. That is expensive. This powder is okay. It's not one of my favourites. Like, it's like, it's decent, it does the job, but again, I feel like there are so many more affordable ones that are, like, they do the same thing, you know? I wouldn't say, like, it gives, like, amazing coverage or anything, um, but, like, it's fine. Like, it's a perfectly decent pressed powder, but do I think it's worth £30? I don't think a lot of things are worth £30. Um... It's fine. So we're just going to use this to set the rest of my face down. Okay, so I'm going to use a finishing powder as well. Obviously my most expensive finishing powder is my Laura Mercier 
Um, this is the Translucent Loose Setting Powder Light Catch Up. Obviously it says it's a setting powder, but to me this is a finishing powder because it's like super glowy. Um, it's like a really like subtle highlighter, but for all over the face. Um, I wouldn't use it as an actual setting powder. Um, what? Again, I forgot to write down how much this is, so let's find out. £34. That's a lot of money. Um, I do quite like this, but I wouldn't buy this again because it doesn't even really work as a setting powder. It just works as a finishing powder on me. And the colour's quite like bronzy. Which again, because I'm like lightly tapping it over my face, like it's fine. But if I'm using it like to properly set, like it just, the colour would not work. And this is the lighter shade. But it does leave a really nice pretty glow on the skin. If you use it like over powder. Okay, so moving on to cheeks. The most expensive bronzer that I own is Hoola Light from Benefit. This is £28.50. I have to say I do really like this bronzer. The shade works really good for pale skin. Um, I really like it. The packaging kind of annoys me a little bit, if I'm honest. Um, just because you kind of need to use like a smaller brush to sort of get in there. But that's fine, because I have a smaller brush. Um, but it is a really nice bronzer. I do really like it. Okay, so the most expensive blush that I own is from the brand Douce or Douce, I don't know how you say it. Um, this is this is in the shade Hidden Tropics, which um, I'm pretty sure that you can get this look fantastic, I think. Um, I got this in a cohorted beauty box again um, a few years back, but it does retail for £24, um, which is the most expensive blush that I have. Um, it's like this sort of corally colour quite pretty it's a decent blush um so yeah i'm gonna pop this one on my cheeks a bit on my nose you know the drill um so for highlighter the most expensive highlighting product i have is a palette um which makes sense i guess um this is the anastasia this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Moonchild Glow Kit, and this costs £41, which is a lot of money. Looks like this, it's quite like sort of holographic and kind of icy. Um, not as into these shades as much as I used to be, um, but it's still a really pretty highlighting palette, and I wouldn't get rid of it because it's so expensive. And like, I do like it. Um, I don't know what shade to use. I think I'm gonna use the shade Pink Heart, which is this one down here, which, if the name is correct, has a slight pink hue to it. Can't actually remember. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a pink hue. add a bit of setting spray I'm pretty sure this is my most expensive I haven't actually checked but um um decay all nighter ultra glow I have the original as well I think they're the same price I will check in a sec but I'm just gonna put a little bit of this on urban decay all nighter the original was 27 pounds so is the glow one so yeah that's definitely my most expensive 27 pounds okay so next we're gonna do um, eyebrows. So for eyebrow gels, I actually have a tie again for the most expensive, which is uh, the Benefit Give Me Brow and the Uoma Beauty Blowout, uh, don't know. It's a brow gel from Uoma Beauty. Um, both of these, both of these cost £23.50, so they are the same. Um, I think I'm going to use the Benefit ones though, just because I do prefer these. Um, I've got two shades, I've got three and I've got five. Five is a better shade for me, but I've not got a lot of product left on this one. But uh, I'm gonna use it anyway. <laughs> so I'm just gonna fill up my brows with this. I love this brow gel, it's really good. I would buy it again, definitely, despite the price. <laughs> Okay. 
for brow pencil, it's another benefit product, of course. Um, this is the Precisely My Brow Pencil in number three. Um, it says £22.50, which is my most expensive brow pencil. Um, so I'm just going to use this to give my brow a little bit more shape. Okay, going back to going back to eyes, um, I'm gonna go back to the Anastasia palette. I'm gonna use the blue eye shade in the inner corner because obviously I feel like blue will probably work well with the eye look. Uh, yes, just going in the inner corner. So back to the eyeshadow palette, using some more of the red shade on my lower lash line. Let's go down low. And I'm going to put some of Reckless right up to the lash line. Okay, we're going to use some more of the Morphe Mascara, my bottom lashes. Okay, so for lips, um, I've got three products here. So technically the most expensive one is this MAC one, um, which is one of their matte lipsticks in the shade Act Natural. This was £18.50. Um, however, this is a really pale shade and I feel like it looks a bit stark when I use it just on its own. Um, so the second most expensive lipstick I have is another Douce Douce product. Um, I don't know what the name of this is because it's not written on here, but I will put a screenshot on the screen. Um, but this one's £18, so it's only like 50p cheaper, and um, it's just a nude bullet lip. So I'll probably use this and then layer some of the MAC lipstick over it. Um, and then I do also have the Fenty Beauty Gloss Bomb, which is £18 as well. Uh, so I think I might use that over the top of all that. So I'm probably just going to use all three of these lip products. Starting with the Deuce one. This is just a nice nude shade. So I'm going to put a little bit of this MAC one over that in the centre. And for the sake of it, let's use some gloss bomb as well. <laughs> okay, so I think that is the makeup done. I'm just gonna brush my hair, clean up any mascara mess, um, probably put a bit more of that Urban Decay setting spray on, and then that will be it, my finished most expensive makeup look. <laughs> right, okay, so this is the finished look. This is a full face with my most expensive makeup products that I own. Um, I'm actually really happy with how it turned out. I actually do really like the eye look. I mean, yes, let's just pretend that it's super symmetrical. I, I, I don't know what it is. I'm just really bad at getting my eyes to look the same on each side. Um, I do actually really like the eye look. Um, like these eyeshadows, like they're amazing. Like they're so vibrant. They're beautiful. They blended really well. Like 42 pounds is a lot of money for an eyeshadow palette, but like, this is nice, right? <laughs> I have to say, like, pretty much all of the products that I've used, like, I love. Um, I mean... Some of them I would rebuy, others I wouldn't. Um, others I have, like, cheaper ones that I actually think are better. Um, some I do think are kind of worth the price. Controversial, maybe. Um, yeah, I'm actually really happy with how this turned out. I think the skin looks really nice, lips look nice. Eyes look pretty cool, brows looks great, cheek products are nice, like everything's good. 
There's some really good products here, some of my favourites. Um, I'm actually pretty happy with how this turned out. I think this is quite nice. Um, considering I looked like an absolute wreck at the start of this video because my skin's been an absolute nightmare lately. It's just, it just, it seems like when I think it's getting better, it then gets worse. Um, yeah, so this is an improvement. <laughs> I am actually going to do a full face of my cheapest makeup, naturally. Um, that's probably going to be my next video. And then I do also want to do like a half drugstore, half high end, like dupes video. Um, I did do one of those a few years ago, but um, I want to give it another go. I feel like I have a few different ones. Um, so yeah, those videos should be coming soon. That is it for this video. Let me know if you've tried any of the products that I've used in this video today and what your thoughts on them are. Um, but thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Goodbye.